live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Never thought I'd be crocodile hunting on the Clinton River. Local resident Don and local law enforcement out on the prowl tonight. We're hunting down a crocodile in the Clinton River. Yes, you heard that correctly. Take a look at this. A wild ride through Warren and a driver who made some pretty bad decisions. But we're going to begin with a search for a hit and run driver who killed a road worker on I-94 today. Off the top on Local 4 News at 11, the victim is a 26 year old man from Chesterfield Township who worked for the Macomb County Department of Roads. Police say he was near his service truck this afternoon on eastbound I-94 near Nine Mile when someone hit him and took off. Jason Colthorpe is live in St. Clair Shores with the latest on the investigation. Jason, good evening. Good evening, Kim and Michigan State Police are getting a lot of tips on this case and a lot of the calls it's getting are focusing on a white box truck that may have been involved in this accident that came along. The early part of this investigation shows it seems to be a larger vehicle that came along and likely sideswiped this young man, killing him instantly. The accident happened just before 3 p.m. on I-94 when a Macomb County Department of Roads crew was putting down some patch to fix a broken manhole cover. One of the members of the crew said that he heard a thump, and uh, as soon as he turned around, uh, that's when he noted that his co-worker was laying on the ground. The eastbound lanes were shut down for three-plus hours as MSP investigated the scene at Nine Mile. Tips about the vehicle that did not stop were already coming in. A lot of them are describing a white in color box truck that may have been involved in this incident, uh, but I don't want anybody to narrow their focus to that. We truly need drivers to only drive when they're behind the wheel. For the Department of Transportation, this latest tragedy again puts the spotlight on drivers being more attentive. People who are driving are protected by their vehicle with thousands of pounds of steel, metal and glass, seatbelts, airbags. The person working on the side of the road has a vest, maybe a barrel. The man who was killed was just 26 and from Chesterfield. It's a loss the entire transportation family feels. I know personally I've been on the verge of tears all day about this. A young man, they're all our brothers and sisters who are risking their lives for us. It hurts, it hurts a lot. Yeah, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle also issuing his uh, thoughts and prayers to this family tonight and also saying that uh, Macomb County will work with MSP to track down whoever is responsible for the death of one of its own. We're in St. Clair Shores, Jason Colter, Local 4. Just awful. You know, Jason, this is anecdotal, but it seems as if we've seen a lot of deadly accidents this year. Have you been able to look at any of the data to back that up? It does back it up, actually, Kimberly. In fact, MSP happened to mention that tonight, that right now, compared to last year, there's 50 more deadly accidents uh, all, all over the state and all on the roads. And it has to do with what you just heard right there, yeah. drivers driving faster than usual. And thinking, thinking about it this way, we had a pandemic where a lot of people weren't on the roads mm -hmm. for several weeks and even months, and they're still seeing that jump. And again, they're pointing to people just driving faster and need to slow down. Yeah, maybe because there's less traffic, people feel like they can drive faster or should. It's a factor, yes. Probably not the right thing to do, of yeah. course. All right. Jason, thank you. New video tonight of a traffic stop turned police chase in Macomb County. Yeah, watch this video here as the driver squeals away, topping speeds of 100 down Van Dyke at times with flames shooting out of his tailpipes. Mar McDonald is live in Warren tonight. Uh, Mar, two people are in custody after this, this wild ride here. They sure are, Kimberly, and I think the driver may have watched a little too much Fast and Furious. Take a look at the police dash cam. The Warren officer has just pulled this car over, hadn't even had a chance to step out of his squad when... The driver hits the gas and nearly slams into the squad car as he runs, flying down Van Dyke at speeds topping 100 miles an hour, heading south. 
where the driver slows down momentarily as black smoke and flames shoot from the tailpipes. He's now on the 696 service drive where he makes a big mistake. Turning into a residential street, smoke continuing to billow from the car as he takes a turn and ends up at a dead end and bails out of the car. Warren police go after him on foot. And cuff him. How many people are in that vehicle? Four. Are you mad? Are you hurt? No. After the officer makes sure he's okay, a discussion. Dude, you spun around and tried to run into me. No, no, the car went out of control. I wouldn't even try to do Back here live, nobody was hurt during this chase. Warren PD tells us they've got two in custody who have been charged, but not arraigned. We're expecting those arraignments tomorrow. We're live in Warren tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Some kind of video. All right, Mara. The next auto show in Detroit won't be held in the summer after all. 2021's North American International Auto Show is moving to the fall of next year. It will run from September 28th to October 9th. Officials moved the show back because the Los Angeles Auto Show was moved to May, and that would have ended less than two weeks before Detroit's was set to start. Officials say it's good news for Detroit because new models are, of course, introduced in the fall, and we also love to show off Michigan in the autumn. All right, now to the coronavirus and the state's update on outbreaks in schools across Michigan. The biggest case count on the list came from Grand Valley State with 694 cases. Novi High School is reporting eight cases and Utica High School has two. Michigan saw 1,536 new cases of the virus over the past two days. And unfortunately, we've lost 12 more lives. The state no longer reports numbers on Sunday, so the case count is a two day total. A teen could face charges for a crash that killed two Oak Park High School students and hurt four others. Southfield police say the driver was weaving in and out of traffic, topping speeds of 100 when he crashed into trees on Telegraph on Friday night. The car burst into flames. Four people were thrown out. All six victims are either 16 or 17 years of age. Police don't believe drugs or alcohol played a role. Driving is a a very exciting time, but driving comes with a huge responsibility. One teen, 17 year old Jalen Cantrell is still in the ICU. The three other teens are stable. Oak Park School High School, I should say, is providing support for students and staff. Supreme Court nomination showdown picking up steam in Washington with President Trump saying he may announce a nominee to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg by this weekend. President says, in fact, a Michigander is on the short list, and the Detroit News is reporting that it is Joan Larson, federal appeals court judge appointed by President Trump in 2017. President says five women are being vetted right now. He wants the Senate to hold a confirmation vote before the November 3rd election. Senator Mitch McConnell says they will hold a vote, but is giving no time frame. Democrats say Ginsburg replacement shouldn't be decided until after the election, something Republicans themselves argued for when Justice Antonin Scalia died back in 2016. Today, McConnell said it's not the same. This is also completely false. Here's what I said on the Senate floor the very first session, the day after Justice Scalia passed, quote, the Senate has not filled a vacancy arising in an election year when there was a divided government since 1888. There is only one way for us to have some hope of coming together again, trusting each other again, lowering the, lowering the temperature, moving forward. And that is for four brave Senate Republicans to commit to rejecting any nominee until the next president is installed. So far, only two seem to be leaning that way. Justice Ginsburg will lie in repose at the Supreme Court on Wednesday and Thursday. On Friday, she'll lie in state at the U.S. Capitol, becoming the first woman to ever have that honor. Meanwhile, tonight, President Trump held a rally in Toledo in front of a crowd yelling, fill that seat. He told the crowd he would pick a female candidate as Ginsburg's replacement. The president also referenced the talks of an attempt to impeach him, saying he's the only president who would get impeached for attempting to fill a Supreme Court seat. 
And he also mentioned the Big Ten, saying he's proud to have put pressure on the conference to restart. Tomorrow, Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris will spend the day in Michigan. Her first stop will be in Flint in the morning, touring small businesses impacted by coronavirus. In the afternoon, Senator Harris will head to Detroit for a roundtable conversation with a group of black men. After that, she'll take part in a voter registration event. Uh, of course, because of the pandemic, the events will be live streamed. The TSA makes some alarming finds in carry-on luggage this weekend's busts at Metro Airport. Let's check in with Ben. Guys, autumn just hours away, and the temperatures are going to be more summer-like as we finish out the rest of this week. We'll look at that, some smoke in our area, and Beta heads towards Texas coast. All coming up. In fact, Ben, the Gulf Coast is in the bullseye again. 10 million people in the path of this serious storm that could bring intense flooding. A look at the damage already done coming up. Tim. A lovely evening on the Clinton River until you realize there's an alligator or crocodile lurking in here somewhere. Law enforcement on the case. You see the alligator. Never thought I'd be crocodile hunting on the Clinton River. Coming up, we've got some exclusive video on the night cam. Could this be the elusive Clinton River croc?